Now, the same thing happens in our gut that it happens in the soil. When you have a bad guy in your gut, this bad guy is going to take your minerals and put them into an unusable form. Okay? The good guys put your minerals into a form that you can use them. You can't use them over here. It's the same with your food. When you have minerals and nutrition in your food, the bad guys in your gut turn this into a form you can't use. They give you a toxin that is going to start messing with your systems. Okay? And it happens slowly over time. Okay? The good guys don't do that. They put things into forms that we can use. And so this stimulation of pathogens in every environment has a dire consequence. It generally doesn't happen very quick. But when we get a stimulated organism like Clostridium botulinum and we produce that neurotoxin, you can take children out in weeks. It doesn't take 30 years to cause cancer that way. It'll kill them really quick. Same with our chickens. Is we have glyphosate come in on our feed, even organic guys, the glyphosate's in your feed. Okay? And you don't always get to start with non organic or organic seed. And the thing is, is a lot of these organic fields that are now organic haven't been organic. They've had glyphosate sprayed on them. And for decades, the plant's still taking it up. Okay, we, we don't have a safe place in our environment anymore where there's not glyphosate. And, and so these are just things that we're dealing with. The only defense mechanism is we can't let the stimulation of bad guys overrun the good guys. And then we have a barrier against the problem is we're constantly reinforcing the good because we have this influx of bad. So what time frame would you say if you, if you got a good population of microbes would take out the glyphosate? You can re... If you're diligent and you want to brew your own microbes, create the right microbial balance in your soils, less than two years you can take the glyphosate out because you have to have a microorganism dismantle this sucker. Okay? But how are you going to kill your weeds in the meantime? You, you, okay, so, so the, the first thing is, is, okay, we still got weed issues. Okay, so if we're going to use glyphosate, can we reduce the problem? Okay, can I put less glyphosate out there? And so we have a product that's called Argosy. And let me see if I can find the sheet. It's, it's, it's this, this guy right here. And what it does, <clears throat> it's a polymer. Th this material was used in heart stent surgery to strengthen the veins uh, when they put in stents. Okay, so it isn't toxic. But what it does when you mix it with glyphosate is it acts as a, a almost like it saran wraps it onto the plant. Neutralizer. Actually, it's, it's, it's not a neutralizer. It holds it onto the plant and it increases its, its effectiveness. Okay? And where this stuff got tested that I've seen is, is you look at the citric industry in California, you look at it in, in Florida, and, and I've been to these citrus farms. As we went down, we've, we've gone to the farms, on the farms, and we've asked them what their rate of glyphosate application is. Now, you guys think you're bad at 32 or 64 or 50 ounces. You guys can't even hold a candle to these guys. These guys are putting out between 15 and 20 gallons a year. And they are not controlling their weeds. And they're their orange groves are disappearing off of the face of the planet. They have got every conceivable disease because those plants are disease magnets. And you will have greening where the fruit literally rots before it can, it can get harvested. It will fall down on the ground. And it is an absolute mess. They defoliate. The, these plants are the sickest 
plants that are still have a little life in them that you've ever seen. And the problem is, is a lot of these soils are sandy. So the glyphosate goes down, the tree absorbs it, chelates the minerals, and then you have all the pathogens attacking the plant, putting in the toxins, and the trees just don't function. So they started using this Argosy product on the glyphosate. 20 gallons an acre, and it wasn't killing the weeds. So they put in whatever amount of spray was, like for example, if you're spraying five gallons an acre, you use 1.6 ounces of Argosy. It's cheaper than the glyphosate, but you cut your glyphosate rate in half. If you're spraying 32, you go to 16. The next time you spray, you what go we're doing to is We're just increasing the effectiveness of the glyphosate, so we use less. So within one year, see these guys were spraying, they were spraying four to five gallons every three months. That was their application rate. Within a year, they had got it back down to, to most of the guys were using 64 ounces and no one was using more than a gallon per acre and they had almost complete weed control. Now, that's not going to hold forever because nature's going to come back and say, I'm supposed to have weeds here. So it's going to go around it. The, the problem is, is is that, that environment was so toxic that the trees couldn't grow. Well, now the trees are starting to come back because we haven't put this overload of toxin in. Okay, there's still damage, there's still problems, but the system is beginning to repair itself. Right? Yes? During this process, did you just reduce the amount of diversity on the farm or did you also put in beneficial uh, They weren't doing anything with the microbes or minerals. They, they could have done far better. That's a good point. So the, the, the long-term solution is, is we got to get away from stuff like this because, because this has a dramatic effect on our soil biology, our plant physiology, and human health. And, and our livestock. We, we got to do better than this. And so, okay? But what we're trying to do is reduce drastically the amount of toxins we're putting out in that environment because they're all coming back home. This is a start. This isn't the end. We got to get better about doing this. And the thing is, is how we do this is through plant health. How we do it is through soil health and microbial health, mineral balance. Because then our plants don't need the, the, the fungicides. They don't need the insecticides. And if we can get our biology and our minerals better in balance, then we encourage our plants, not encourage our weeds. See, a weed is sitting there, when you go out there and we've got morning glory, we've got pig root, we've got... Kosher. Oh yeah, that's a great one. What it's telling you is this plant does better in this soil than your wheat plant does. Because the conditions allow this plant to do better. Well, we know that if we alter those conditions, it will hinder that plant growing. And the conditions are mineral balance and biology balance. Now, can we do this all at one time? Heck no. This is going to take a while to get there. But, but this, is, this is what happens in the big scheme of things. And this is why microbes are so important. Whether we're talking about putting microbes in our system to stop the bad guys from producing toxins that are irritating our stomach. I mean, your body's telling you something for a reason. If, if I've got gas, if I've got a bad stomach, if I'm not digesting, if I'm not eliminating, if I'm not doing all this stuff right, I got some bad carpenters down there making some wacko stuff that my body says I don't like. And so we, if we straighten out the biology first and start putting some minerals back in there, that's what drives these systems, and that's how we correct things in a big way. And it's very inexpensive to do this. You know, when you, when you look at this, this is pennies a day to fix people putting these microbes and these minerals back in. And, and we do the same thing on our chickens and our, and our, and our pigs is, and our children and us. Is we put these microbes back in because we're whacking them out every day. We put the minerals back in because things are causing us to lose our minerals. 
And so if we just fundamentally do those basic things, you have a huge barrier against, against these problems. 